almost nothing, you can accomplish incredible things. Well, growing up um, was kind of hard, but you know, we, we enjoyed ourselves anyway. <laughs> we were migrant workers, and a lot of my early childhood is filled with memories of the fields, of people uh, uh, you know, having to do brutal hard work to just you know, put food on the table. We were all about labor, you know. We, we didn't have, have any dreams of, um, I couldn't even imagine what an artist was at that time growing up. Uh, none of my tios, even though they were really good at drawing and doing, you know, things with wood, you know, nobody ever thought, oh, you can make a living at this, or this is something you could t take up seriously, you know. We didn't know any writers or people like that, you know. When I started coming to San Antonio, I was uh, nine years old because the, um, the machines came in and started picking the cotton. So we lost our livelihood, you might say, but we also gained um, uh, a lot of freedom to become educated. And so uh, when I came to San Antonio, there was just this creative burst of energy everywhere. Sunny the Sunliners were playing in garages, practicing in garages down the street from where I live. Uh, not, not, not in 1959, but like in 1960, 61, all of a sudden I just saw all this creativity going on with music, mm -hmm. you know, and then at the time I was always, uh, I loved comic books and I was always drawing Batman and Spider-Man and, you know, Superman and stuff, and my friends would see it and they say, hey, you know, can you draw one on my notebook? And they would give me a quarter, you know, and I would buy more comic books for that quarter. So, uh... I started at an early age drawing on just about anything that would stand still long enough, like, like my mom's refrigerator. You know. It was always covered with graffiti that I had to clean up. But it was just pencil, you know. And uh, I was just obsessed with drawing. And I didn't know anything about color, but uh, that's how I started. Art has a power to, to cross boundaries, to bring people together, to solve problems, to uh, bring joy to life. As Chicanos, we were never meant to be artists. We were meant to be laborers, you know, according to the America I grew up in. But uh, I think when somebody tells you you can't do that, you don't say that to an artist because an artist will do it. Yeah. <laughs> That'll just drive him even more, you know. And uh, sometimes uh, I take that, you can't do that as, as just something that I have to overcome. It's like an obsession, you know. And uh, that's what I tell the students at school, you know. When somebody tells you you can't do, you can't do that, you know, make it, <laughs> your, make it your, your goal in life to do it, you know. Because it's going to be a big reward at the, end of the, at the end of the line. It is up to us to find the great truths of our time. When I started out to become an artist, um, I didn't want to be, uh, do my art just to be accepted in mainstream America, mainstream art America. I wanted my art to be about things that uh, uh, I hold dear, things that matter to me, you know, personally. Because art is very personal, or, or, or can be very personal. Like Frida Kahlo, you know, painted all about her, you know, suffering and, and, and you know, all the stuff she went through. So uh, I wanted to do artwork that was unique to our culture that involved uh, cars, that involved uh, rucas, that involved pachucos, you know, things that uh, were not necessarily accepted by mainstream art America. And uh, I, I really didn't care. I, I sacrificed my life, actually, to be and stay a Chicano artist. Because I could easily be a mainstream artist, you know. I'm surrounded by, uh, you know, mainstream culture. But to me, that would be like uh, giving up my integrity as an artist, as a serious artist. Because I consider myself a serious artist, not an artisan, or you know, um, como se dice, uh, something akin to a basket weaver, you know, or, or somebody who does masks or something. I uh, wanted my art to be uh, thought of as part of art history uh, in the Chicano experience. The Chicano experience is, is an American experience. You know, it's just not portrayed that way in mainstream America. It's portrayed more as lower class or, you know, ignored completely. But I didn't care, you know, I figured, you know, if I'm going to uh, do art history pertaining to me, it's going to be about the things that, I, that matter to me. The Chicano experience is, is an American experience. 
Well, you know, it just comes naturally to me. I, I just uh, seek out, you know, the things that send out in my barrio to me. You know, like this image right here, is called, this thing is called Ruka in a pilot. And I actually saw this on this expressway just near here, one January or February night, and it was freezing and it was raining, and I was coming up the ramp, I mean, coming up on the expressway, and I saw a, a pilot, you know? Yeah. And there was a woman running towards me, and she was kind of dressed like in her 90s, you know, she was pregnant. She had tattoos on her arms. <laughs> And I pulled over right to hell, but then cars started, you know, like careening behind me, and I could see lights going in different directions. So I went a little bit further up, but then by then some other people had stopped to help her. But there was cars like that, you know, they were like hitting each other, and one of them was upside down, and the other one was hanging over the rail, you know. So it was th things like that inspire me, you know, because you see something like that, and it changes your perspective, uh, and it changes your, your life's experiences when you see uh, an event like that.